Take a look with me at these four pictures of computer systems. We have an airline traffic controller, a bank machine, a car, and a pacemaker. All of them have something in common. They're all controlled by computers. And as you can see, each of them are extremely vulnerable and have disastrous results. Hi, my name is Shad Sluter, and I'm going to help you to become a better information technology security professional with a course that we're looking at right now. So in this video, we're going to define some cybersecurity terms. So right now, we're going to think about three of them. Vulnerability, threat, and attack. And of course, these three are basic to understanding computer systems and their information security. So after I present these three vocabulary terms to you, I'll give you a short quiz at the end and then offer you a prize. So stick around to the end of the video. So the vulnerability is what we're looking at here as the weakness in a computer system. Here's a good question for you. Take a poll. I've got four items here that are very valuable. But the question isn't which is valuable. The question is, which is the most valuable to you? So you've just bought a new computer with 64 gig of RAM and it's got a great processor. You also have some expensive software on it. Then you have all your personal data, such as your semester papers and your family videos and your tax forms and everything else. Or you might take your work home with you and you have business data on it, such as yesterday's warehouse inventory numbers. Or you might have a project that you're working on and the blueprints and the plans are on your computer. Or you have a report that you will release tomorrow and it will be shown on Wall Street as your company's quarterly earnings reports. Now, A... B, C, or D, which of these is the most valuable? So you might originally have chosen A. It's an expensive computer. It's probably worth thousands of dollars. However, you can replace it. And if you do lose it, there's no damage to your company. The software, you look at B and you think, well, I could just probably get a new copy of it, and Microsoft might even let me use a, a free download if I can prove that I bought it. So B is out. C looks like a pretty good value proposition. You took your trip, you spent the plane tickets, it's an irre irreplaceable time that you can spend with your family. Maybe your baby was born. So those things don't really have price tags either. In this case, though, we're probably thinking about item D as the most valuable. Your job will depend on how well you defend your company's assets, how well you're able to keep your company's reputation in a good standing. And so your customer data and your warehouse report and your company earnings probably would fit as the best category. Here's another good question for you. Which one of these systems or which one of these things cannot be hacked. So look through the list. Do you see anything that you would say probably cannot be hacked? Well, I get to the some of these things like uh, maybe the coffee maker and the garage door opener simply because they don't have computer systems. Or do they? It seems like everything today has a computer in it with software and communications and with the Internet of Things, pretty much everything is hackable. So since we're talking about vulnerabilities, take a look at this car here. It's a beautiful car made by Google. Look critically now and ask yourself, what vulnerabilities do you see built into the design of the car that could be a liability? Well, first of all, <laughs> it has no steering wheel. That seems to be the most obvious. It is electronic steering and you are along for the ride. The computer controlled throttle, however, is also just as vulnerable. And so your car might not be made by Google, but it likely has an electronic system to control the speed. The braking, who actually uses actual connections to brake pedals, it's now controlled by computers. How about the door locks even? If you're locked in and only a computer can get you out, you are in a vulnerable situation. Google Maps, this car drives by Google Maps. It's run by something that's on the internet. Oh my goodness, now you look at the car and you realize how many vulnerabilities that the manufacturer and the designer has to be aware of. Here's a nice system for you. Do you see any vulnerabilities or potential issues? 
It's a nice child tracking system. You just place your Amber, Amber Alert GPS in your child's backpack. Whenever you want to know where they are, you just simply send a text message and you get a map with a star on it. Now, you're the only one that can access this, correct? Or are you? There's some vulnerabilities here that, as mother and kindergarten son might think, are just um, probably not there. A good computer mind would think, this child is less secure than if he were going with no system at all. Unless, of course, you came from the Harry Potter world and Mrs. Weasley's clock was your system where you can see where your children are, whether they are at school, at the dentist, or in mortal peril. Here's a manufacturing system that we'll talk about in a future video about the vulnerabilities of a uranium enrichment center in Iran. Now, Iran, as you know, is trying to develop a nuclear weapon. And they have this facility to refine the actual ore and they are trying to use centrifuges. Now, the first cyber attack that may have been ever accomplished successfully was done allegedly by the United States and Israel against this laboratory. It was supposedly invulnerable. They had no issues with connecting to the internet. They didn't have computer systems controlling these, and yet the attackers were able to blow these pieces apart literally disintegrating the motors that ran these centrifuges. And uh, you'll have to stick around to see actually how they did that. But even the most secure, tight laboratory, a, a detached from the internet, is vulnerable if there's a computer system involved. There's two types of attacks, really, when you think about it. There's an attack that's called an active attack, and also in a passive mode. So the active attacks are those things that destroy and they search out and they steal. They're actually easier to prevent. They're easier to detect as well. But the passive idea is where you simply slip in, snoop around, see what you want. And so each one of these has its own special dangers. Some are more public than others, but both are equally expensive and dangerous to your company. So let's do a quiz here. If I asked you which one of these three categories are we talking about, is it a vulnerability, a threat, or an attack? Let's see if you can answer it. So first of all, this says thousands of people would like to use your credit card number to buy something. Is this a vulnerability, a threat, or an attack? So if you answered the word threat, then you were correct, because threat is the potential for a problem. Here's the second one. Your credit card number is printed on a receipt. Is that a vulnerability? Is that a threat? Or is that the attack? Well, in this case, if you said vulnerability, then you're correct, because your credit card number is more vulnerable than it was had you not printed it. The third one says, a person creates a fake copy of your credit card and then goes to a gas pump and fills his tank. Which one of that, which one of these three is, are we talking about? A vulnerability, a threat, or an attack? And if you said attack, then you are correct. Okay, so those are the three different categories of way, the ways we look at information security. So if you got a good score, if you got a three out of three on this quiz, then follow the uh, suspicious link in the bottom of this uh, video. It'll take you to a site where you can enter your name and social security number and birth date, and I'll be sure to send you a good prize. So thanks for watching.